theyeshiva.net. So we now begin our fourth and Be'ezer Hashem final class on this special Maimer, this great Hasidic discourse, Be'yoyim Ashtay Asar, Tav Shin Lamed Aleph, Yud Aleph Nissen, the 11th of Nissen, 1971, presented them by the Lubavitcher Rebbe, dedicated to the theme of Hashem's choice of the Jewish people and the Jewish people's choice of Hashem. I want to mention also that, uh, you know, Pesach is coming and we all want that extra dosage of meaning and inspiration and uh, empowerment and perspective for the Seder and for the preparations for Pesach and for Pesach itself and being with our loved ones and our family and our communities, however you spend the Seder at home or away from the home. So if you go to our website, theyeshiva.net, and you go to the Pesach section, we have on top Torah, and in Torah you have a section of holidays, and you go to Pesach, there's approximately, I think, 80 items that you can choose from to prepare for Pesach, many videos, audio, essays. We have them divided in subcategories. The Seder, going through the Seder, Pesach themes, uh, essays on Pesach, short clips, um, etc. Lukutei Sichos, Chasidus on Pesach and other items that you could see over there on the website, the yeshiva.net. This series has been dedicated by the Pearson family and my friend Rebbe Tzian Pearson in honor and tribute, loving memory of their grandfather, Rebbe David, Ben Rebbe Yaakov Yosef Raskin, in tribute to his birthday on 12th Nissan, 95th birthday, and in tribute to his yard site next month, Zion Ear. Thank you to Hainish Masay Tzruda, B'tzur HaChayim. We have already learned, we had three classes, Friday, Sunday, and uh, Sunday. Friday, Sunday, and Sunday. And uh, today we are up to the fourth class, and we're holding Si'if Yud, which on your source sheets would be page 11 of your source sheets, Si'if Yud. It's the 10th chapter of this of this Mimer. And again, we have it also in English translation. If you scroll down, even though page 11 is still the Hebrew, but if you scroll down... You have everything also in English translation, so you can uh, you can review it that way. And I hope many of you at least will find the time and the mental space to review this mimer, um, because it has so much, so much, really endless. It's uh, there's in an in infinite light of of godliness that comes across here. So let's um, let's uh, let's continue. We're going to continue with chapter ten. Let me begin this class with a little story. It's a story about somebody known as the Beis Halevi, the Briske Rav, the rabbi of Brisk. First he was the rabbi of Slutsk and later of Brisk, Lithuania. His name was Hagon Rabbi Yosef Doiv Halevi Soloveitchik. He was the father of Reb Chaim Soloveitchik, Reb Chaim Brisker. No one has the Beis Halevi. His work is called Beis Halevi. Of course he was a Levi, Rabbi Yosef Doiv Halevi Soloveitchik. He was a Rosh Hashiva in Valozhin, and then later, later in his life, he was the Rav of Brisk. And they tell a story that um, he would learn many, many hours of the day. And there was somebody once who asked him if he can take off some time in order to take care of some other stuff and engage in other stuff. He would learn like 17 or 18 hours a day. And he said that he can't. They said, why not? It's important things. And he said, let me explain to you how it works. I learn 18 hours a day. There's another Jew who learns an hour a day because he's busy, has to work, has to support his family. There's another Jew who learns five minutes a day. He doesn't have any more time. There's another Jew, the Gemara speaks in Menachis about the Jew who just says, Kriya Shema in the morning and in the evening, and that's his whole Torah. And that's all he can do because he's really occupied completely and maybe doesn't have the headspace or even the ability to learn anymore. Then there's a Jew, he says, who doesn't even learn at all, but you know, Shabbos, he comes to Shul. And then there's a Jew that even Shabbos, he doesn't come to Shul. <laughs> but Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur maybe, he comes to Shul. And then he says there's a Jew in Paris who maybe never comes to Shul, but he still feels Jewish and is connected to the Jewish people. And the Briskerov said, (laughs) and if I learn a little less (laughs) than 18 hours a day, 
Then the Jew who's learning an hour is going to learn for half an hour. The Jew who's learning for five minutes is going to learn for half a minute. The Jew who's learning for a minute is going to learn for five seconds. The Jew who comes to Shalom on Shabbos is going to come to Shalom once in three months. And the Jew in Paris is going to be lost to our people. <laughs> now, what he of course meant was that things don't happen always in a very concrete way. They begin, it's called in Chesidus, Hishtal Shalos, there's an evolution. Distortions don't happen in brute ways. They start first happen in very subtle ways. Very subtle ways. And then it evolves. This is the concept of Hishtalshalus. When we look at an infection, we don't only look at the symptoms. We want to look at the origin. And when you look at the origin, you can go deeper and deeper and deeper. And then it begins always with something very subtle. And we know how true this is in the world of healing. In the world of healing... Sometimes what is playing itself out in such a dramatic fashion in a person's life can be traced back to very, very benign and subtle and silent moments in a person's primal space, in the formidable years of a person's life, when it didn't necessarily happen in a dramatic, pompous, loud way. Sometimes yes, but not necessarily. And yet those subtle, subtle distortions, after many levels, after, after it devolves, through many, many stages, it ultimately emerges on the bottom in a very, very different way. This is the concept of Hishtalshalos. And that's why real healing always tries to go back to the source. We don't only deal with the symptoms. We want to go back to the inner source because when you heal things in the inner source then everything changes on every level. But that's hard because we like to target the enemy you know, head on. But sometimes the enemy is not head on. Sometimes the enemy that I have to target is very, very deep. It's not even conscious. It's not at the surface. And it's very subtle. This is the concept called hishtalshlus. Hishtalshlus means everything evolves. And the way it evolves is very dramatic. And from stage one, to stage thousand, there could be a thousand levels. A thousand levels, you know, when I'm eating an apple from the apple tree, that apple came from a tree, which came from a seed, which came from a previous apple, which came from a previous tree, which came from a previous seed, all the way back to the first antecedent, what's called the first ilo, the first seba, the first antecedent. It can go back thousands and thousands of years. And it's true with time, it's true with space, it's also true with spiritual time and spiritual space. In this Maimer, we're being introduced to this concept in terms of the concept of the struggle with replacing an authentic life with a false life, with a fake life, with connecting to anything but the truth. That distortion can exist on so many different levels. And what the Rebbe is teaching us here is that sometimes it exists in very, very subtle, subtle ways, very benign ways, even in very spiritual ways, even in very noble ways. And that's the pikchus, it's the wisdom that when the king comes in with his entourage, including the dukes and the generals and the governors, And different subjects say, I'm going to choose as a patron the duke, the military commander, or the governor, the duchsin, the ifrichin, or the istrilutin. And then there's the pikeach echad, who says, I'm not nasev malka. I'm choosing only the melech, only the king. On a very low level, this maimer discusses the distortions on six different levels. From the lowest space, where God becomes Elikada Lakaya. He's the God of gods. We're gods, but he's the God on top of us. You know, he delegated the company. He delegated the universe. He's not involved. If he wants to mix in, he can mix in. Yeah, he gave everybody their power, but you know, he does his own thing. And therefore, there's real power happening outside of Hashem himself. That's the lowest level. Elikada Lakaya, the Gemara Menach is the God of gods. There's a blockage that is more benign. Of course Hashem runs the world, but there's many, many employees who have a say. (laughs) There's waiters, there are managers, there's middle management, there's higher management, there's lower management, and they're all there, they have choices, they get to decide, and therefore 
I should be affected by them. I should try to please them. You know, if I'm nice to my waiter and I tip him, I'm going to get the wine faster. I'm going to get the steak faster. I'm going to get the chicken lo mein or the steamed vegetables or tofu and sprouts much faster. Although I don't know if you have to go to a restaurant for that. You just have to go to the Baron's Garden for that. <laughs> right? So that's another distortion. In other words, yeah, God runs the world, but there's a lot of intermediaries, and each of them has personality, and they assume significance. And the Chacham, the Pikeach says, Anonos of Malcolm. Then there's yet a third level. And what is the third level? The third level is much, we go yet to a, a deeper space. And the deeper space is where there is the blockage where what I'm interested more is the thing and not the relationship. I want the, I want the beef, not the relationship. I want the hashpa, not the king. And that's the reason why Jews, during the first Beis HaMikdash especially, and throughout history, there was this saturation with idolatry, which is very strange for us. But the concept is completely applicable till today. And that is, I like to go to a place from where I can get my fixes, my highs, my fulfillment, my satisfaction, fast, easy, and for free. And I also want the excessive rush of energy, which is what klipa, what the shells, what the husks offer, where a relationship with the king requires pikchus, because what I'm looking for is, I'm looking for the relationship, I'm looking for the connection. And therefore I go to Kedusha. I want the Melech, I want the King, not the Hashpa. Even though that means that the flow is something I need to earn, so it's going to be more restricted, it's going to be more filtered. Even though it means I have to pay a price, but that's what I'm choosing. Which brings us to the fourth level. This decision itself could just come rationally, because I recognize bluff, from that which is not a bluff. Klipa ultimately is a bluff. I don't want the bluff. But then there's something deeper. And that is, Chelki Hashem Amr Nafshi. A Jew says it's not just about the future. One day history will show that all Klipa is a bluff. Even today, I want the presence of the relationship. I don't need your credit card. I don't want your credit card. I want my father. Chelki Hashem Amr Nafshi. Anonos of Malka. That's what I want. And we learned at length that even though this makes sense rationally, but nonetheless the reason it makes sense rationally is because that's what my soul wants. Because if not, my mind ultimately is going to be defined by the bias of personal self-interest. It's the Chelki Hashem, it's the fact that your soul is a piece of the divine that reshapes your mind to really be able to be open to ultimate truth, to ultimate objectivity. What a powerful idea. Which brought us last night in the class to number five. And number five is, I'm not looking for idolatry, for stars, for galaxies, for, for forces of nature. I'm not subservient to things that are separate, Klippa. We're talking here those who want the slay, the servants of the king and the ministers of the king and the prominent ministers of the king around the table representing the angels, representing the spiritual energies of Briya, Yitzir, Asiya, representing even the spheres of Atsilas, representing even the light, the light which is the channel for infinite divinity, which are all with the king and serve the king and want the king and are connected to the king. Comes the Alter Rebbe and tells us, I don't want your Elam Haz, I don't want your Elam Haba, I don't want your Ganeid Na'alyan, I don't want your Ganeid Na'tachten, even though it's yours, <laughs> even though it's your Ganeid, and it's your Elam Haba, it's yours. Ich will manage das dich allein. In other words, even Giluyim, even those experiences of the divine, which basically are about experiences, in other words, they're ultimately the way the divine energy is filtered to accommodate my sensibilities, to accommodate my spirituality, to suit my spiritual ego. Even this does not satisfy the soul of the Jew. The soul of the Jew, the ultimate calling of the Jew, is the ultimate truth, and the ultimate truth is Ano Nasiv Malka Ichvil Menish Das Dichalen. Only you. You. And that's the metaphor of the Balshamtiv. That the king allows everybody to enter. 
But so many of us get stuck in the chambers that surround the king, meaning I'm looking for the king, but I'm looking for the king in a way that pleases my palate. So this one gets stuck in the food chamber and the wine chamber and the whiskey chamber and the music chamber and the art chamber and the literature chamber and the jewelry chamber because they're so rich. And the more sophisticated I am, the more easier it is to get stuck in everything. And these are getting stuck in good things and beautiful things and holy things. But the only, the tefillah le'oni chiyatav, he says, no, v'lifnei Hashem yishpech sicha. I want the full truth, only the truth. I want the etzim itself, the ultimate truth. But that takes a lot because Al Dalt Rebbe explains in Lakuta Torah that he brings in the Maimer. Gan Eden is a place where you experience Ziva Shechina, the radiance of the Shechina. When you experience the radiance of the Shechina, you could be present. I don't have to lose myself in Hashem, I could find myself in Hashem. And that's the question Do I want to find myself in truth or am I ready to lose myself in truth? So we often feel we want to protect ourselves, we want to find ourselves in truth. But what the Rebbe is telling us here is, Chel ki Hashem Amra Nafshi. For a Jew to be content, a Jew will never be fully content if he or she doesn't completely lose themselves in the truth, because that's who you are. My real I is that I have no I outside of Hashem's I. I'm going to say that again. My real I is that I have no I outside of Hashem's I. That's my real I. That's the dinikud of the Maimer. But it's not, in other words, if I'm still thinking about my spiritual self-centeredness, I'm not really in touch with my own MS. I'm still busy protecting myself. And here, again, we're talking here about very subtle, subtle levels. Ganeidin Eilam Haba, these are not places of ego, these are not places of, uh, of Klippe, these are places of ultimate Kedusha. The Ziv HaShchin, it's the radiance of the Shchin. Why is it, though, that the Jew will not be content with any of this. Why is it? What was the Alter Rebbe? The Alter Rebbe is a voice. The Alter Rebbe is a mouthpiece. You know, there's an expression in the Navi that David HaMelech is Ne'im Zmiro Yisrael, right? His mouth, his mouth is the mouthpiece of Klal Yisrael. There's a beautiful word from the Svasemes. It says in Tehillim, Kofir Aleph, Oida Hashem Bechal Levavi, Oida Hashem bechol levav, not in Kofi Aleph. We say it. Tefillah leDavid Hatei Hashem. Oida Hashem bechol levavi vachab deshem chol leolam. Right, but in Tehillim Kofi Aleph, there's an expression. It's a beautiful word from the Svasamas. One sec. Tehillim Kofi Yud Aleph, I believe. Oida Hashem bechol levav. I will thank Hashem with all the heart. Well, whose heart? So he says bechol levav is. I thank Hashem with the whole heart of Klal Yisrael. In other words, I speak on behalf of every Jewish heart. When the Alter Rebbe said, Ich will nicht dein Ganeiden, ich will nicht dein Elam Habe, ich will meine Shastich Halein, the Rebbe is saying, he is the mouthpiece of the ultimate, Kla, of the ultimate truth of Klal Yisrael. It's, 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 it's just, it's capturing, it's manifesting, it's embodying the ultimate consciousness of what a Jew is. And that's why it relates to every Jew. Not every Jew is the Balatanya, that's true. Not every Jew is the Alter Rebbe. God gives every soul its shlichus, right? But there's the Nekudah, the Nekudah of a Yid that a real Rebbe expresses. And that's what a real man is Yisrael, a real Rebbe, is Ne'im Zmiris Yisrael. What he shares, what he experiences, what he embodies, he's manifesting the true core of the Jew. Obviously, I can be more in touch with myself, I can be less in touch with myself. Depends how many distractions I have, depends how much static I have. So now we come to the next level. Now the Maimah is going to go yet a step deeper. <laughs> it's going to go a step deeper. Now, I think it's just important to emphasize. We're living now in a generation where, you know, people often ask, are these ideas really relevant today? People have so many problems and challenges and there's so much stress. But the truth is, not only are these ideas relevant, these ideas, at least the way I see it, are oxygen. <laughs> and the reason they're oxygen for today's generation is because so many of us cannot continue to live with our old I. You know what I mean? The old paradigms that functioned are not working for so many people. 
So many people, in terms of their marriages, in terms of the relationships with themselves, in terms of their children's relationship with them, in terms of our anxiety, in terms of our faith, in terms of our identity, in terms of our day-to-day life, living as humans and as Jews, we all feel the need to recreate ourselves. We all are looking for rebirth. This is what I'm seeing everywhere. The old and the young, especially the young, even the old, as the old are a little more stubborn about changing. <laughs> you know, we're a little more stubborn. The young are not stubborn because they're young. But everybody is, is, feels the need for, for, for recreation. And, and here is where it is. What, what the world is looking for, this is the consciousness of oneness. The consciousness of mili b'shamayim v'imcha lechafatz It's three words, anon nasiv malka. Anon Nasev Malka means that wherever I am, in every space, you have access to the full truth. In every space, you have access to the full truth. But don't get stuck in distractions. What are the distractions? They could be very brute and low and stupid. And they can be very deep and brilliant and profound. But they're still not real. It can be very deep, very profound. Sometimes... We have masks of religion. We use religion. We have here some therapists sitting with us here in the class. And they could share, I'm sure, much more than I can, how sometimes people come in and their greatest blockage is religion, God. God becomes, MS, MS, God becomes the greatest cover-up. <laughs> Why? Because we can use everything as a distraction, even Ganeidin, even Elam Haba. Now, this mimer is going much deeper. You have a person that the whole Ganeidin and Elam Haba is just one big ego thing. The whole Ganeidin and Elam Haba is just about my superiority complex. The whole Ganeidin and Elam Haba is just about me repressing myself because I believe that I'm going to get some eternal spiritual challenge. Sometimes the whole Ganeidin, I once heard from the Biyoyal Khan, <laughs> he told me that there was a young man who came to see him and he was growing spiritually. And uh, <laughs> he told him a very interesting story. <laughs> He was laughing when he said it. Abel Khan was, was a very interesting man, but he was very transcendent. You know, he wasn't so grounded. So he was laughing. He loved it. He said there was a, ba- a bacha. He was a brilliant, brilliant boy. Brilliant. He knew how to learn. Just an amazing head. Just a gewaldic combined. And he loved talking about himself. He loved talking about how great he is and he's smarter than everybody and he understands everything. And that he feels he could be the next Godel, he could be the next spiritual giant, intellectual genius of the generation. And he told Rabbi Yael, <laughs> he said, but one of my teachers told me, you have to stop talking about yourself. I said, why? I want to. He said, because if you want to be a Godel, you have to be an Onov. If you want to be a godl, you have to be an anaf. Right? If you want to be a godl, you have to be humble. So therefore, you better stop talking about yourself. <laughs> it's not going to work. <laughs> the Biel was saying, you know, the poor kid and his poor teacher. <laughs> if you want to be a godl, you have to be an anaf. You better stop talking about yourself. Right? When you learn chsidus, <laughs> that conversation changes. The conversation, Not because we don't have big egos. We have egos. And we have traumas and we have insecurities. But you bec- we, bec- we try to become a little sensitized to what's trauma <laughs> and what's normal. Right? What, 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 what's, what's an anav? What's an anav? An anav means that I don't say anything. <laughs> or an anav means that I'm open to ain't safe. Huh? Yeah. What, why do you say it's not relevant? Right, but sometimes I have to acknowledge that I'm having these emotions. Sometimes a person just wants the attention and validation. And that's also part, that's also part of Avoid. <laughs> Anonos of Malka over there too. Anonos of Malka over there too. <clears throat> so, very good. I've heard this story that there was one somebody who spoke out against the Rebbe and later he apologized. And he asked, and he wrote to the he told the Rebbe, or he wrote to the Rebbe, that I hope that you don't have a kpeda, that you're not harboring resentment towards me. So he says, trust me, I don't have time to harbor resentment towards another Jew. They say from the Kotzke Rebbe that he told his students, I don't want you not to sin because you don't have a Yetzirah. I want you not to sin because you shouldn't have time to sin. 
Yeah, such a beautiful insight. Of course you have a Yetzirah, but you shouldn't have time to sit. <laughs> Do you realize how, how, how powerful your life is? Right? So yes, you know, a child sometimes, you know, wallows in a little excrement and uh, adults too. The difference is, do I enjoy it and that becomes my spirituality or do I realize, yes, you know, these are stuff I have to deal with, but that's not where, that's not where, <laughs> that's not where I want to hang out. It's not where I have to hang out. But we're talking here even a real Ghanaian, even a deep, deep Ghanaian. So ultimately, it can become a distraction of the emes. What's the distraction? The distraction is that I need the experience of Ein I need the experience of it. And that's ultimately means I'm living a little bit in static, a little bit in a distracted, distraction place. Because what you really want is etzim itself, ultimate truth itself. Now the Maime takes us into this next space. Let's continue. Chapter 10, if you'd. This is a very deep, very deep <laughs> chapter. If you'll open your source sheets, it's page 11 of your source sheets. If you'd. You can get the source sheets on theyeshiva.net or Chabad.org or YouTube or COL. And thank you everybody for streaming. Can Svregen ask, ask? Yeah. Yeah, so the Rebbe said that the danger of investing in Dain Gan Eden is, it seems so beautiful, so holy. But he says, ultimately, ultimately, in a very, very subtle way, that is what allows for the evolution, for the Hishtalshalos of a person to ultimately lose the point of Emes. Why? Because why do I want Ganadin over Atmos? Because I'm looking for the ego instead of the truth. Not a bad ego. Not a bad ego. It's a good ego. <laughs> I'm looking for my spiritual self-fulfillment instead of the real Emes. The real Neshama of a Jew is completely one with Atmos. My real eye is not looking for I. My real eye is looking for Emes. Complete oneness, complete bittel. That's the ultimate Jew. That's the ultimate, ultimate Jew. When I'm a little distracted, I'm looking for my experience. So ultimately, in look at the title, it's called Ligarme. It's self-centered. The Alter Rebbe calls this narcissism. Now, I know it's not narcissism. It's a helikayit. <laughs> Don't compare it with narcissism of certain clients that are sick, sick, sick self-centered people who make other people's lives miserable. We are not talking about that. We're talking about the Ligarme of Lakuta Teira. <laughs> the Ligarme of Lakuta Teira is a different Ligarme. But the Rebbe says it's not completely different. It's not completely different. Because ultimately, I want my Metzias. Why do I want my Metzias? Because what it means is that something that... My mitzvah is more important than the truth. <laughs> My spirituality is more important than the truth. So he says, ultimately, after many, many, many hishtalshlus, after many levels, can come out the result that even though that I'm receiving something from a place of death, from klippa, from tumma, I'm going to choose that over kedusha because I'm going to get more and I'm going to get it easier. Furthermore, he added. Furthermore, he added. The reason I can invest in that Dain Gan Eden is because I'm giving significance to something outside of Hashem Himself, including Hashem's light, Hashem's spheres, Hashem's Gan Eden, Hashem's Elam Haba. But I'm giving some significance to something that comes from Hashem, but it's outside of Hashem Himself. That becomes somehow significant. It assumes an identity together with Hashem. After many, many, many levels, that could bring me to the space where in my mind I can give significance to something in the world outside of Hashem. To the point that I could start feeling the need to please, to flatter, to honor, to worship all the waiters in the world, whoever they are, because they have khir, they have power. 
And I also believe it comes from Hashem. Dain Gan Eden. But the Dain, this, this Vart in the Maim is one of the, sh- the sharpest, sharpest points. Sharpest, I mean intense points. It's the Dain Gan Eden, the Dain Gan Eden that can result in Dain. It's a Dain Welt. You gave them the power. You gave them the power. It's Dain. Now, again, the two Dains are one extreme from another extreme. But that Dain Gan Eden, the Dain, the Dain Gan Eden, it's your Gan Eden. It's yours. It's here for you. Could ultimately, ultimately, ultimately lead, lead me to that space where I'm giving the, the, the world that power because you appointed them. You appointed this manager. You appointed the CEO, not me. When a Jew really, really appreciates the emes, mernitas dichalein, this secures you, this puts you in a place of pure dveikas with emes. And every Jew is connected to this, at least to some level, to some degree. The Herst was tutzich. Meken veinen von azavort, ha? V'yesh lo hoisif biur, ba'ashaych is da non osif malke, la avad emili ba'ashamayim shiroi tzibayr in sof. What we're learning here is also we see how the Rebbe looked at a Jew, right? How the Rebbe saw a Jew. What he saw is the Jewish story, the real Jewish story. It's not just a Jew does Torah and mitzvahs, yeah. It's not just a Jew is holy. It's not just a Jew has a pintalayid. Yeah, all um, uh, amazing. You see really what, what they saw in a Jew, what the Rebbe saw in a Jew, what was is hayid. What the Jewish soul is made of. What the Jewish soul is yearning for. What the true mahus of a person is. It shows you who you are, what you are, and what you're avail- what's available for you at every moment. And what you have access to. And if you don't take that, if you don't get that access, everything else is, is, is insignificant relative to that. And this doesn't take away a Jew from the world, as we will see at the end of the month. It doesn't take a jail from On the contrary, it doesn't take you away from relationships. It doesn't turn you into, some people think, oh, this is such high levels, I'm going to become crazy. No. If, if we're going to become crazy from it, then we're not understanding the vart. It's not about becoming crazy. It's not about running away. On the contrary, atmos is everything and everywhere. <laughs> You're not running away from anything. That's the point. The point is, that in every situation, you're only in tuned with the ultimate, ultimate flow of absolute oneness. You're in that zone, you're in that flow. And even when things come up in the world that are so distracting and so difficult, I can completely be present, knowing I don't have to run away from anything, because running away means that there are distractions. I want you to understand this because this is very subtle. Whenever you have to run away from something, why do you run away from something? Because there's a distraction. Why is there a distraction? Because I'm not in the space of Anon Nas of Malka. Anon Nas of Malka means there's no distraction. What do you mean? Do you know the difficult emotion that I'm having right now? It's very distracting. It's not. (laughs) There's meaning here. There's purpose here. You're going to learn something. You're going to grow. Don't give up on it. You don't have to run. You don't have to run from any person. You don't have to run from yourself. That's the hard one. You don't have to run from yourself. You don't have to run from Elam Hazi. You don't have to run from Elam Haba. Don't turn them into distractions. Anna Nasev Malka. When nothing is a distraction because everything is connected to the ultimate truth. Right now, Hashem is here. What does it mean Hashem is here? It means that every point of life is filled with Ein Soif. It is Ein Soif. Anonas of Malkit, nothing else matters, nothing else is significant. You're always in the flow. You're always one. Now, we struggle, we fluctuate, but this is the Nikuda that the Mahimir is conveying. This is how the Rebbe lived. This is, this is what the Rebbe embodied. This is what we saw, how he lived, how he breathed, how he spoke, how he taught, how he saw people. There was never a distraction of the ultimate, ultimate truth. Right now, right here, dveikus and ein soif, anonas of malk. And that the whole world is a manifestation of that dveikus. And every person is a manifestation of that dveikus. Now that means every moment something else. (laughs) 
Sometimes it means I have to stay here, and sometimes it means I have to leave. Sometimes it means sur meira, sometimes it means hasei toiv. Sometimes it means yimin mekareva, sometimes it means small doicha. Sometimes it means to do something, sometimes it means not to do something. Sometimes it means to speak, sometimes it means to be silent. Sometimes it means to dance, and sometimes it means to cry. Sometimes it means to embrace, like the 28 seasons in Ecclesiastes and Kehelas, right? There's a time for war and a time for peace and a time to speak and a time to be silent and a time to laugh and a time to cry. But I can fluctuate between all those itim because I'm not Nas of Malka. I don't get stuck in any season or in any modality or in any particular moment. It's mi eideyem le'ez kazois. Le'ez kazois, this is the moment. Yeah, somebody mentions here the story of Roy Klein. Roy Klein was a commander of an Israeli platoon. And an Arab terrorist, you remember the story? Threw a grenade on his platoon. And I believe his name was Roy Klein. He jumped on the grenade. He screamed, He jumped on the grenade. He experienced the full impact. He was killed and he saved his whole platoon. I met his wife once. She had a baby afterwards. I think she was pregnant at the time. He was a young man. He was in his 20s. Very, very talented. Great personality. They said about him that he's going to be the future Ramat College. He was a, he was a, a religious kid, a religious young man. A from young Guju. They, they had a vision for him. He's going to be the Ramat Kal, the chief of staff of the Israeli. I mean, he was an incredible person. And he did it like this. He didn't plan it. He couldn't premeditate it. It was a decision of a millisecond of complete Mesidus Nefesh. Complete Mesidus Nefesh. It was an, an incredible moment. An incredible moment. Yeah, somebody just mentioned here the story in the chat, so I'm saying it. I remember when it happened. Yud. Now, what does Mesidus Nefesh mean for us? It may mean something very different. <laughs> Mr. Snefesh may mean what I do with my eyes, what I do with my ears, what I do with my nose, what I do with my mouth, what I do in this moment when I'm being very, very triggered, how I relate to somebody else, a loved one, a stranger. But going out of any place that keeps me down and doesn't let me Allow myself to be who I really am. Who am I really? Anonos of Malka. That's it. Reb Shalom de Herst. Anonos of Malka. Anonos of Malka. That's the avoid of Yeralifness. Anonos of Malka. Dichalein. In, in the Alter Rebbe's language, it's Dichalein. In the Medrash's language, it's Anonos of Malka. Nasev means I'm going to choose, take, choose, acquire. A no Nasev Malka. I'm going to acquire not the dukes and not the governor, but the Malka. The Kula Meschalf of a Kula Meschalf. Yesh lo Hesev Biur Yud. Yesh lo Hesev Biur Bashaiches. A no Nasev Malka lo Avad Mili Bashamayim Shadoy Tzebeir and Saif. To explain even more. The connection of Anonos of Malka to the love that Dalter Rebbe spoke about. I want you. I want you. Bahakdim. Let's go one step deeper. Dalat. <laughs> What's the key mistake? He says, what's the core of all the mistakes? The core of all the mistakes is, the mighty de Kavart, is we confuse the tool and the objective. We confuse the means and the ends. We have to understand this. If I'm going through a difficult emotion, right? If I'm facing a difficult trauma, what's the difference 
between two responses. It's always one difference. Do you see your challenge as a means to get you closer to Hashem? Or do you see your challenge as an end in and of itself to tell you that you're a sick person? That's the key difference. Real Avedis Hashem means everything is an emtsoi. Everything is a tool to reach the emes. And therefore, I'm not afraid of anything. It's a tool to reach the emes. It's an emtsoi. An emtsoi means it's a means, it's an instrument. The baby doesn't agree with me, okay? It's a tool to reach the emes. What's kechavim, what's avoyde zara? They don't see that everything is just an emtsoi. It's, a, it's, 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 it's an axe. It's an axe. What's an axe? An axe doesn't have... You don't give attention to the axe. The axe is just a tool for the chopper. So if I'm going through something in my life, let's say I'm dealing with a difficult emotion, with a difficult experience, it's an axe in the hand of Hashem, meaning it's there to be able to achieve something. It's not an independent God, Elikad Elikai. The Kechavim Amazalist of Avedizada was the mistake that they decided that the world itself is everything. They didn't see it as a conduit, as a channel. And therefore, they start worshipping it. They worship the stars, they worship the sun, they worship the moon, they worship their job, whatever you worship. The same is true about the physical flows and blessings of life. All of it is a tool for a relationship. It's all a tool for oneness. But those who worship Kechavim Mazalis, again, the physicality becomes not a tool, it becomes an end in and of itself. And that's why they didn't want to go to Kedusha, they wanted to go to Klippa, because they wanted more physicality. Why? Because that itself became the end, instead of it being a tool for true relationships, for true oneness. So the Nekudah of Avedizar is what? The Nekudah of all the mistakes is, I don't know how to distinguish between that which is an instrument, a tool, a conduit, to help me get to where I have to get, and that itself becomes the ultimate story. And when that becomes the ultimate story, that's where I get stuck. So I have a craving to something, right? I have a crazy craving to something. Instead of realizing that the craving is only an alarm clock, it's only an emtsoi, it's only a tool to be able to make me aware of who I am and what I need to do and how to get closer to Hashem, what happens? I get consumed. The taiva becomes an avedizara. The taiva becomes a god. In other words, I start attributing significance to anything outside of emes. When really everything is enoid movada. So the Rebbe says, now let's go right. V'hinei hagiluyim gam hagiluyim achinailim hatachlis uloi behem atzma. V'hem nakem tzoyi shal yodim tushlam hakavona pnim is didi betachtoinim. Now, all the giluyim, even the highest, highest revelations of Hashem, their purpose is not they themselves. Hashem himself didn't have to reveal any light and any svidis and any levels. Hashem is free. The reason he revealed everything he revealed, it's not for them themselves. It's that his ultimate purpose should be fulfilled. What was his ultimate purpose? He wanted a relationship with each and every one of us. What's called dira betachtainim. The matter says Hashem created the world because he wanted to have a home in the lowest space of reality. He wanted to live in my heart and your heart. Hashem says, I can live anywhere, I'm infinite, but I want you. Hashem says, ich will managed vidir. I want you. The Alter Rebbe was responding to Hashem. <laughs> Hashem says, all I want, did it and all the revelations in the world, all the highest, highest revelations, the Tachlis is not that. The Tachlis is to fulfill the purpose of did it to bring Hashem's oneness into every aspect of the world, the physical world, our physical world, our home, our heart, our brains, our space, our anxiety, our wounds, our traumas, and the whole planet Earth. When a Jew chooses to get stuck in Gan Eden, in Olam Haba, in Giluyim, I'm looking for oil, oil, I'm looking for light. In other words, I take that which is only an emtsoi, it's a tool, and I turn that into the main thing. So the Rebbe says, ultimately, that can cause me to lose focus of what's the emes and what's a tool for the emes. 
And that's the core of what happened with Havayda Zara. They took all of the forces of nature and instead of seeing them as an axe, an instrument in the hand of the Rebbeinu Shalaylam, they gave it its own significance. And you took, they took the whole Gashmis and instead of understanding that the whole world is an instrument for dveikas, for oneness, everything. There's a beautiful word from the Mezir Chamagat. Moedet We say in the morning, every morning, listen to this word. Mala ha'aretz kinyanecha. By the way, the Bavram Kalisker was a Talmud of the Vilna Gon. He became a chassid when he heard this vart. Listen to the vart. Mala ha'aretz kinyanecha. We say it in the morning. What's the pshat? Mala ha'aretz kinyanecha. So it means the whole earth is filled with your acquisitions. Right? In other words, you own everything. The Magad said, Mala ha'aretz kinyanecha, after saying Yiddish. The welt is full mitzachin durach velche mekendir koinezayin. The earth is filled with things through which we can be kind of Hashem. Nothing in the world, nothing in the world can take you away from being kind of the Rebbeinu Shalalim. Malo Ha'aretz, the whole world is filled with Kenya Necha. You can acquire God through everything. <laughs> Rebbe Ram Kaliske heard that. Ah. That's the source of healing. That's the source of, of that's the Rebbe when a Jew suddenly becomes fixed on Giluyim, what's Giluyim? Giluyim means I want my inspiration, I want my revelation, which is amazing. But it becomes a tachlis in and of itself. And it takes me away realizing the Nikuda is, what does Hashem want right now at this moment? Where He wants to live? So what happens? He says, ultimately this gives room for the terrible mistake of Avodah Zarah, where the instruments become the Iker. Alpiz Yashloimas and now let's go one step further. According to this, it comes out as follows: the Zeshul Masayla Mehen Eivdin Lechama Mehen Lelavana. For Yisrael, Ein Eivdin Lele Lakadish Baruch Hu, Ki Asherish Do Masayilam Hu Bechitzayni Yisaratzim. Sheroitze Beezer Dava Bishvilin Yenacher. For Abchinah the Chitzayni Yisaratzim Kamei Shimak Alum Masayilam Mi Ba'ifin Shein Nirgish Basharatzim Nu Bishvilin Yenacher. Elat Shazeg Gufu Hu Atachlas. For Lachain Mistayif Mizeshul Masayilam Mechashu Masam Matzayim De Kichavam Mazalis Leikir. Whoa, this is, for this you could say a shachiyano. Let me tell you what the Rebbe is saying here. This whole mimer is not about preaching. It's about sensitivity. It's about where you are. What makes the Jew a Jew? It's not we're more talented, we're smarter. Every person is B'Tselem Alekim. It's really where your soul comes from. And if your soul comes from a certain place, that's what you need. And if your soul comes from a different place, you need something else. So the Lubavitcher Rebbe says as follows. Why is it that the nations of the world, they chose the sun, they chose the moon, and the Jewish people chose Hashem? What is it? The answer is as follows. In every person's life, there's something called chitzayni yisaratzen and pnimi yisaratzen. Chitzayni yisaratzen means I want something externally. Pnimi yisaratzen means I want this because this is my ultimate, 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 true, intimate desire. An example. An example. People want to travel. Is that chitzayni yisaratzin or pnimi A person wants to wake up in the morning and go to work. Is that chitzayni yisaratzin or pnimi It depends what type of job you have, right? A lot of things that I want, I don't really want that. I want it because I want something else. I go to work every morning because I love my wife, I love my children, I love my husband, I love my family, and I want to be able to feed my children. I want to be able to give them a home. So I go to work. Do I want to go to work? Yeah, it's called chitzayni yisaratzen. It's things that I want, but I want it for something else. Now go even deeper. There are intimate things a person wants. I want this, I want that, but why do you really want it? Is that your ultimate, ultimate, ultimate rutzen? Or is that rutzen just a layer for another rutzen? And these layers continue. What is chitzayni yisaratzen? What is pnimi yisaratzen? Chitzayni yisaratzen means I want it. But ultimately, it's an external layer because it's a layer for something deeper. 
Now, very few people know what their Pnimi Yisaratzin is. <laughs> it's hard to get there because we're distracted by Chitzayni Yisaratzin. I want this, I want that, I want... Really? That what you want? The person says, I want my child to be like this. I want my husband to be like this. I want my wife to be like this. Why, why, why? What do you really, really want? And you'll see, when you go deep down, it's very, very vulnerable. What do you really, really, really want? And at some point, there's no reason anymore. It's just, this is what I want, this is who I am. And when a person, when you hit that spot, usually a person starts crying. Because it's beyond all the masks. So yeah, I want this. I want money, I want a nice house. I want to go here, I want to go there. I want to do this, I want my family to be this. I want. What do you really, really want? And very often it boils down, what do I really want? I want to be loved. I want attachment. I want to be connected. I want to feel that I have value. But these are very vulnerable things. We don't jump there, right? We say, I want this because, because, because. Because is always Chitzayin Yisaratz. <laughs> because, because, because. And then there's Pnimi Yisaratz. Says the Rebbe, by Hashem, you also have this. There's Chitzayin Yisaratz. Hashem wants the world, yeah. Hashem wants the galaxies, yeah. Hashem wants the planets, yeah. It's all Chitzayin Yisaratz. He wants it. But there's a deeper, deeper layer. Where does your neshama come from? Some souls come from Chitzayin Yisaratz. Some souls come from Pnimi Yisaratzim. If your soul comes from Chitzayin Yisaratzim, that's going to be your goal. That's going to be your life. That's going to be your, that's going to be your Ruchnis. That's going to be your God. Because that's where your soul comes from. The question is where your soul comes from. It's not a lecture. Listen to what this Maimur says. It's the question, are you going to be happy with this or you're not going to be happy with this? If your soul comes from Chitzayin Yisaratzim, Chitzonius is going to become your Pnimius. If your soul comes from Pnimius or Ratzin, Chitzonius becomes frustrating. You hear? This is, this is, this is such an edel, edel of art. If your soul comes from Chitzonius or Ratzin, that's going to be your Pnimius. <laughs> One's Chitzonius is another person's Pnimius. Why? Because that's where my soul comes from. If your soul comes from Hashem's chitzayin yisarats and Hashem wants a world, Hashem wants planets, Hashem wants a universe, He wants, it's, um, look at the world, it's amazing what He wants, but it's chitzayin yisarats. What's pnimi yisarats in? Dine betachtayna. Bereishis says Rashi, b'shvil atayro, b'shvil yisrael. That's pnimi yisarats. It doesn't take away from chitzayin yisarats. It's not bad. I want to go on a cruise, and I want to go on a ship, and I want to have money, and I want to have a good job, and I want attention. And when I finish a speech, I want you to applaud. You don't have to. Thank you. I said when I finished, Mendel. Standing ovation. People who wants, but why? Why do I want it? It's usually I want something else. I want something deeper. So the Rebbe says as follows. The concept of Umar Sa'ilam, the concept of Umar, and by the way, when he says Umar Sa'ilam, he's not just talking about a guy. He's talking about inside me, Umar Sa'ilam. He's talking about the Gentile within the Jew. <laughs> the concept of Umar Sa'ilam means I'm rooted in a place of Chitzayni Yisaratzen, and therefore I feel this is it. So what's the result? The result is I look at the world, and the Emtsai becomes the Iker, the tool the instrument, that becomes life. That becomes reality. The Jew will never be content with it because his neshama is pnimi yisaratzen. And in pnimi yisaratzen, there's no room for anything else. You can't run to other stuff. This is what it's about. Everything else is just a tool for pnimi yisaratzen. So the Jew's consciousness feels that everything in the world the stars and the planets and the forces of nature and all the physicality. It's all a tool. What is it a tool for? It's a tool for the emes. What's the emes? The emes is Anonos of Malk. Oh, if this is the case, we now come back to the whole question at the beginning of the Maimer. Hashem chose the Jewish people. The Jewish people chose Hashem. And we ask the question, truth, choice has to be two things that are similar. I mean, Hashem chose the Jew. The Jew chose Hashem. The point is, 
when you say Hashem chose the Jew, what does it mean Hashem chose the Jew? It means as follows. In simple words, it means the Jewish soul is sensitive to God's intimate being. The Jewish soul senses the music. It experiences Hashem's deepest self. It's not my choice. I didn't choose it. That's the Jewish soul. That's what it means Hashem chose the Jew. What's choice? We say choice means there's two cups of coffee, and I choose one of the cups of coffee. That's external. Real choice, real pchira, this is what the key I have to understand. Real pchira means something else. Real pchira means something that's rooted in my core essence. In other words, I'm not forced into a relationship with it. It's not programmed inside of me. It's who I am in my deepest place. That's what choice means. It's completely free. This is who I am in my deepest core, in that core that is completely undefined. That ultimate I, this is what I'm connected to. When you say Hashem chose the Jew, you know what it means in simple English? It means that the Jew is somehow rooted in the purest, deepest place of Hashem's existence. So you feel everything. So you feel everything. So an Hashem feels everything. And when you feel everything, you're not content until you have that. So the Jew will never be satisfied with Chitzonius. Only with Pneumius. Why? Because that's who the soul is. That's who the soul is. So now he goes to Yudalif and he says, Alpiz Eyesh Remember how we got into this whole discussion. This whole discussion he got into in Sivav that Seichel is bias. But with the Muna, the Seichel opens up. So because the Jewish soul chooses God, because it feels Hashem, therefore the Jewish mind works a certain way. Pikech. And he said the fact that it becomes rational adds something significant. Why? so this is a whole sugya. It deserves a few hours, but I'm going to say it very briefly, bring out what the Rebbe says. In every person's life, there's two elements. There's what's called makif and pnimi. Makif is your higher energy that is very intense, but it's not internalized in your containers. That's like rotsim. I have a desire. This is my desire. Seichel is that which is integrated in your pnimius. Often in Judaism, we look down at Seichel. We say, Seichel, eh, philosophy, philosophy, it's not Amunah. The Rebbe says, no. Real Amunah comes down in Seichel. Why? Because the Jew is rooted in Pnimi. In Pnimius. In the Pnimius of Hashem. Pnimius Haratzim. Remember we learned before that Klippa gets its energy from Makif. Chitzonius HaMakif. Chitzonius HaRatzim. The Jew is rooted in Pnimius HaMakif. Pnimius HaRatzim. And Pnimius always comes down in Pnimius. So when my Amuna, which is super rational, comes down in a Pnimius, that's when it brings out the ultimate relationship that is Pnimi. Pnimi means who you are in an integrated fashion. The Jew is rooted in the Pnimius HaMakif, the Pnimius of Hashem, because the Jew is a Pnimi. Pnimi is all about, it's one with you, it becomes you, it's not superficial, it's not above you, it's inside of you, it's who you really are. And that's what Al-Tarebbe wanted with Chabad. 
What was the issue? The Baal Shem Tev ignited the soul on fire. Every Jew is a chelik al-kamimah. He ignited the light of Emunah, and it was incredible. It changed the Jewish world. The Alter Rebbe said, now let's take it one step further. Let the Emunah become completely integrated in Chachma Bin Adas. Why? Because then it's complete oneness. It's complete intimacy. It's not just you're committed to another person. You understand the other person. You know, in a relationship, you could be committed to your spouse and you can understand your spouse. You understand the difference? Commitment is amazing. It's the foundation of everything. But when you are, understand me, then we become really connected. We get each other because understanding is ultimately what allows the person to be fully, fully integrated with this concept, with this reality. So the Rebbe says, the real choice of the Jew in Hashem is not just, Chelki Hashem my soul wants you because my soul feels you, Anonos of Malka, and it's super rational, it's Makif, that's Kevaldik, something even deeper. <laughs> when that comes into my Seichel, when it's fully assimilated into my understanding, Pikeach, that's why the Medrash says, Pikeach Echad. And that's why the Maimer said, it's not just a Jew has a Muna and you have a Ratzin to Hashem beyond Seichel, even though the Hashpa from Klip is better. Because you're not looking for Yesh, you're looking for Hashem. Emes. Even deeper is when it becomes part of your Seichel, your real understanding. Suddenly it becomes normal. It goes into your structure. It becomes part of your structured life. That's the ultimate Diri B'tachtoinim. The ultimate Diri B'tachtoinim is... That infinity goes into finiteness. That the Ur goes into Kalim. When does the Jew's essence come out? When the Ratzon goes into Seichel. When the Makiv goes into Pnimius. Because when the Makiv goes into Pnimius, it touches Pnimius HaMakiv. Pnimius of Atzmos. And that's where the ultimate relationship is. The ultimate relationship doesn't have to deny Seichel. It comes into Seichel. Because it goes into Panemius. And that's Chelki Hashem Amri Nafshi. There's Hashem Atoyev Chelkeinu, Manoyim Geiraleinu, Mayofi Yerushaseinu. Geiraleinu, Geiral is higher than Seichel. Why did you win the Geiral? It's not Seichel. Yerusha is higher than Seichel. It's my genes. Chelkeinu, that's my part. That's my understanding. That's my input. Ashreinu Matoyev Chelkeinu, Umanoyim Geiraleinu, Umayofi Yerushaseinu. Chelki Hashem Amri Nafshi. My soul says, You're my Chelek. You're not just my Ratzin and my Yamuna. You're also my Chelek. You're my Pnimius. You're integrated into my Kalim. Because the great, great choice of the Jew in Hashem is when the choice is not just super rational, when the choice is integrated in my cerebral brain, in my, in my, in my understanding, in my comprehension, and it affects my thought, my speech, my action. That captures the Pnimius Hamakif which comes out in Pnimius in a person. In other words, it comes out in Caleb. So by the, when it comes into the Seichel, when it comes to the Seichel, it becomes integrated, and then as he says, it goes into thought and words and actions, which means it can inform my emotions and my sensations and my experiences and my midas. It's not just higher than me, transcendence. Transcendence is amazing. It's nuclear energy. That's what the Baal Shem Tev came. He wanted to ignite the nuclear energy of the soul. The Alter Rebbe said yes. But you know what the problem, the problem is? When my brain blocks that. So when I get into a mood of emunah, I'm there. The Alter Rebbe said the brain doesn't have to block it. The brain could be open to it. In other words, Atzmos doesn't have to exclude Pneumius. On the contrary, it comes into the Pneumius. And that's the my of the Pchira that comes through Seichel. The next paragraph, there's two more paragraphs, Yud Beis and Yud Gimel. The next paragraph, even though I really, really want to, I really, really want to learn it inside, but because of time constraints, I have a flight to LA. So I'm going to say it outside. This Yud Aleph Nissen, Tav Shun Lamed Aleph, the Rebbe's birthday, we know the meaning of the Baal Shem Tev, that you say every day the Kapitel Tilim of the year of your birthday. So when you become 13, you start saying Kapitel Yud Dalet because it's the beginning of the 14th year. 1971, the Rebbe's birthday was 69, began the 70th year. So he started Kapitel Ayin. 
So the whole Mimer he shows in one posik in Kapitel Ayin. The whole Mimer. <laughs> and that's Sif Yud Beis. And he brings here an amazing Medrash that at the surface is completely incomprehensible. But with this Mimer we'll understand the Medrash. Let me give you the background. The end of Kapitel Samach Tes of Tehillim, and they turned it into a famous Chabad song, is... Ki Eloikim Yeshiatsiyon Vivne Are Yehuda Vi Yeshu Sham Videshuha Vizera Vadov Yin Khalua Vaya Veshmai Yishkinuva Hashem will save Zion, he will rebuild the cities of Judah, the Jews will dwell there and inherit it, and the children of his servants will acquire the lands of Yehuda and those who love his name will dwell there. That's the end of Kapitel Samachtes. What's the beginning of Kapitel Ayin? Lam Natseach le David Lahaskir. A choir master for David to mention him. What does this mean? So the Medrash Tehillim says something incredible. And that is, the Medrash says that there was a king who had flock and he got upset at the sheep and he expelled the sheep and he undid the the pen the corral the space the stable where the sheep were and he got rid of the shepherd after a while he had a change of heart he brought back the sheep he rebuilt the pen for the sheep but he ignored the shepherd so the shepherd said to him you have the sheep you built the pen why don't you remember me? Says the Medrash, David HaMelech, the shepherd told Hashem, You brought back the sheep. You rebuilt the pen. You rebuilt the corral. You rebuilt the cities. But you forgot about me. I'm the shepherd. That's why Kapital Ayin is Lam Natseach LeDavid LaHaskir. Could you also remember the shepherd? Asks the Rebbe, I don't understand. Hashem got upset at the sheep. The king got upset. Why? For whatever reason, he got upset at them. So he got rid of them. Now he decides he wants them back. So why doesn't he remember the shepherd? He remembers the sheep. He rebuilds the pen. Why Taka doesn't he remember the shepherd? And David HaMelech has to specially plead and beg. And you know, many of the Mepharshim, I think that Venezuela, Lahaskir doesn't make sense. What does it mean? Nobody, what does it mean, Lahaskir? The Medrash says, David says, remember me, remember me. It's a and He says, why does not Hashem remember him? So he says as follows. The Gemara speaks about seven shepherds and eight princes of Klal Yisrael. The Gemara in Sukkah. Shiva Rayim and Shmoina Nesichim. What's the difference? A shepherd and a prince, a nesich, to tzaddikim, that they give a flow to the Jewish people with makif, through miracles, through their holiness. And then there are tzaddikim that they're royim, they're shepherds. What's a shepherd? A, shepherd's, a shepherd feeds the flock with pnimius. When you eat something, it goes into you. So there's two types of tzaddikim. There's royim and there's nesichim. There are those who inspire the Jewish people in ur makif. Their inspiration, their energy creates a halo of light and you look up to them and it gives something to Klal Yisrael. But then there's Araya. Araya is a shepherd. A shepherd doesn't inspire the sheep. A shepherd feeds the sheep. A shepherd sustains the sheep. A shepherd is all about Pneumius. I feed you in a very internalized way. So the Rebbe says like this, Hashem wanted the sheep. Hashem wanted the pen. He also wants David HaMelech. But Ratzon, desire, can be, I have a desire for you. But our desire doesn't make that we should really be one. Because it's not integrated. I like you. I'm connected to you. It could still be a relationship of makif. I inspire you. I give you things. But it doesn't become who you are. The relationship is powerful. But it's not you. And that's the difference between emuna and Chabad, Seichel. Emunah means my soul is connected to the source with a super rational passion. But when I come back to myself, I'm not necessarily connected. 
And that's what Al Tareba was worried with Chassidus, that when the big tzaddikim won't be here anymore, the inspiration won't be here. Because you watch Rebbe Yitzchak of Baditchev, you watch the Rebbe of Melech, you watch the Rebbe of Zusha, you watch the other great tzaddikim, the Helek Rebbe from Lublin, it's Kevaldik. But then when you go home, what are you left with? You're left with the Amuna, and then when they're not here anymore. So the Alter Rebbe wanted it should be Pnimius. Chachma bin Adas. It should be integrated. In other words, he wants to shepherd. David HaMelech says, Hashem, I don't only want you to want us. I want it should be a roya. It should be a Pnimius. Lam Natsayech Ladovid Lahaskir. As long as the Pnimius is not here, we're missing everything because the Makif itself is ultimately rooted in Chitzonius HaMakif. And the Pnimi is rooted in Pnimius HaMakif. That's the word. In other words, makif, as powerful as it is, is ultimately rooted in chitzonius. Pnimi is rooted in pnimius, the pnimius of Hashem. So therefore, this goes back to the Maimer of Shlach Tovshin Tesvav, how Seichel can change Midas, because it's rooted in pnimius hamakif. The key here is, it's a very big sugi in chitzidus, but the nekuda is that makif, even makif of Kedusha, ultimately is rooted in a place that's more external. The Pnimi is rooted in the ultimate Pnimi. Why? Because the Kavana of Hashem was a relationship. So when something is really Pnimi, it's rooted in the ultimate Pnimi. Because the Kavana was oneness, dveikas, a relationship. So David HaMelech says, I don't want Makif. I want the Roy, I want the Pnimi. And the ultimate Pnimi, he says, is learning. And even though Hashem is going to give the flock everything they need, so what do you mean they don't have a shepherd? So the Rebbe says the ultimate Pnimius is Torah. Because Torah is integrated, we learn Torah. And since the Medrash says that the Torah of now is vanity, it's Hevel, relative to the Torah of Mashiach, so the real Pnimius is missing. And even though these Pesukim, Kelechim, Yeshia, Tzayin, are talking about after the Geula, but the main revelation of Geula is Atzmus Oyrin Sov that's higher than Hasaga. So you would think it's not Pnimius. So David HaMelech, David Malka Meshich says to Hashem, no, I want that Atzmus should come into a Pnimius. I want the shepherd. I want that Atzmus, which is higher than comprehension. And Muna, Lamayla Meh should come into a Pnimius. That non of Malka shouldn't only come from a super rational place, it should be fully integrated with my structured self so that it could permeate all aspects of my brain and ultimately it could permeate all aspects of my heart. That's what David HaMelech is asking for. And now we're going to learn the last chapter, Perik Yud Gimel. We're going to go for another 10 minutes, Perik Yud Gimel. Al pi kol hanal. Al pi kol hanal, based on all of this, yesh levayda keshev ha-shaych is the Yisrael b'kadosh baruch hu. We now come back to the beginning of the Maimer, that Usher sacrificed his offerings because of the choice of Hashem and the Jewish people. And the Rebbe asked the question that the Medrash seems to contradict itself. First it says that the main praise of Usher and of the Jewish people is that they choose Hashem. And then he says that the reason he offered the offerings is because Hashem chose us. So he says, now we'll understand the connection. What does it mean Hashem chose people? Hashem chose the Jewish people. What does it mean He chose the Jewish people? Let's say it in English. It doesn't mean there was a bunch of chocolates and He chose one chocolate. It means something else. It's a metaphor. It's basically saying the Jew represents, the Jew is, the Jew captures, the Jew is basically a mirror and a reflection of the deepest, the deepest core of Hashem. The deepest desire of Hashem is the Jew. In other words, they're one. Your deepest desire is not something that somebody gives you. It's who you are. It's your primal, primal, primal desire who you really are, what you really, really want. Not what you want as a tool, as an intermediary, but what you really want. The neshama of a Jew, it's not like I chose a person. This is you. The Jew is rooted in Hashem's essence. And therefore, 
the Jews must choose Hashem. You know why? Because it's who they are. <laughs> Here the choice is, it's not freedom. It's not freedom of choice. It's freedom from choice. You're free of having to choose because you know who you are. <laughs> as long as you feel you have to choose, it's because I'm confused. I want this, I want this, I want that. Real choice means you discover this is who I am. So what makes me free? What makes me free is that I get to know who I really, really am. And that's it. That once you get to know who you really are, there's only one place you're going. Real choice doesn't mean you have a hundred options. That's fake choice. Real choice means you know who you are. (laughs) And you know if this is who you really, really are, this is what it is. That's it. You don't want anything else. It's freedom. It's freeing yourself up from the confusion that comes when you have to choose between a million things because you don't know who you really are. The moment the Jew experiences the truth that Hashem says, I am you, (laughs) and you are me, so that's who the Jew is. So the Jew chooses Hashem, Anonas of Malka. The Jew will not be content with anything else but the truth. You know why? Because he's rooted in that truth. That's who I am. If this is who I am, this is who I am. I'm not anything else. Wow. It says in Tanya that the choice of Hashem was in the goof, in the body. What's Pshat? The Rebbe says, even the goof of a Jew feels atmos. What does it mean Hashem chose the goof? It's not that the soul of a Jew feels God. The goof of a Jew feels God. The physicality of a Jew is sensitive to ultimate truth. And that's why ultimately a Jew will never be satisfied with all the gashmis in the world. That's why Jews are crazy sometimes. You can give a Jew planes and ships and boats and islands and endless money and he's not a happy person. Why not? Because even his goof feels pnimius. His goof feels pnimius and answer. His goof feels ano nosiv malka. So the world doesn't speak to him. The world doesn't speak. You give it to another person. You give him a beautiful home and a beautiful farm and a beautiful plane. What else do you want? Life is great. You're good. You could be healthy. You can go to the gym. You can go to the therapist. He doesn't even need a therapist. He's not Jewish. The Jew has everything and he's going to therapy. Therapist says, why are you miserable? I don't know. I don't know. Tell me why I'm miserable. So the Maimah says, I'll tell you why. Because you're rooted in Pnimi Yisaratzen, Nanechitzayni Yisaratzen. Ano Nosef Malka. You're rooted in Pnimi Yisaratzen, the Vilst Emes. I can give you planes and boats and heaven and earth. I can give you Ganeid and it's also not going to help. Your goof knows it. When the Alter Rebbe says the p'chir is in the goof, it means even the Jew's physical body is sensitive to atzmos. And therefore you feel that all gashmi is, is about Hashem. It's about avoidus Hashem. And if I'm not experiencing my physicality as part of God, I'm miserable. I'm not nasev malk. That's p'sha, the p'chir is in the goof. The goof feels it. The goof feels the, the core of everything. The sensitivity that even your physicality is all about godliness. This explains the matter says that usher, the praise of the Jewish people is that they chose God. And now we know what that means. Choosing God doesn't mean there's two pieces of chocolate and they chose God over the other piece of chocolate. Hashem is not a... How do you compare Hashem to a pagan deity? The pshat is, we explained, the pchire is that the Jew experiences pnimi yisaratzen. 
And once you do that, there's no choice. You're free from choice because this is who you are. And that's what real choice means. Real choice means it's coming from my deepest, 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 deepest core after you peel away all external layers. This is who I am. That's the real concept of Chir and Chesidus. And then the Medrash says that the Karbanis were because God chose us. So the Rebbe says, now we'll understand. The real beauty, the greatness of the Jew is not the gift that you get from Hashem. It's what you do with it. That's the key. Avoid it, what you do with it. And this, what we do with it, this creates the biggest pleasure for Hashem. So therefore, the greatness of the Jew is that we choose Hashem. But the reason we choose Hashem, or the power, the power, not the reason, the power for us to choose Hashem is because Hashem chose us. Because Hashem says, Ich will nicht I want you. I don't have any other distractions. I just want you. I want you. Did it with the Al Terebbe felt that. Al Terebbe felt that God doesn't want anything but you. And that's what Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim was, and that's what Matan Teir is, and that's what Yiddishkeit is. I want you. So he says, I don't want anything else. I just want you. It's like a very powerful marriage. Yeah, what do you want? You want a house? You want this? You want... I want you. <laughs> Everything else, I want a house only because you. <laughs> so I should be able to have you. I want you. Wherever you are, I'm there. The reason the Jew has this power, this, this urge, this yearning, is because Hashem chose us. Because this is what Hashem feels about the Jew. So the Jew feels this about Hashem. You're rooted in his deepest space. So you're not content outside of his deepest space. I'll say that again. You are rooted in his deepest space. So you're not content outside of his deepest space. This every single Jew has because his or her soul is anchored in the pnimius of Hashem himself. So this is who I am. This is the music that speaks to me. Lechol shirayich ani kinor. I am a harp to your melodies. Which melodies? The melodies of Atzmus Ein Seif. The soul is stirred by the melody of Atzmus Ein Seif. This power Usher wanted to bring out through his Karbanas. His Karbanas brought out more this power of what a Jew is because Hashem chose him, which empowers the Jew to reciprocate. Ich will manage das dechalein. That's Usher. Comes the Rebbe and says now, that was stage one in history. Now it's stage two in history. So Asher brought these karbonas to bring out this kayach of the Jew. He says, when the Alter Rebbe said, I want only you, and the Tzemach Tzedek publicized it, this empowers the Jewish people even more. This was an additional strength and energy for our generations to be able to tune into who we really are. Who are you really? Don't reduce yourself to an egotistical creature. Don't reduce yourself even to somebody who wants Gan Eden and Elam Haba. Don't reduce your eye to a filtered eye that can only deal with certain energy. No! Remember who you are. You're completely one with the source of everything. That's who you are. You are infinity. Especially it gives power to all those who follow the footsteps and the pathways of the Alter Rebbe. And here the Rebbe summarizes the Maimer in a way that is very, very practical and in a way very, very basic level, on a very basic level. Even though every person has many different desires, you see he's now taking the Alter Rebbe and he's bringing it down. I have desires that come completely from my animal soul. This is true. Nonetheless, what's the power? So what's the power here? 
Ich will manage das dich allein. He says, it's not true. I have many desires and my animal soul likes this and wants this and wants this. Says the Rebbe, Val Rebbe teaches us and gives us kayach shakol haritzaynes shaloi yiyu beloi leiv aleif. That even though I have all these desires, I should be able to be aware that all these desires don't capture my ultimate heart. <laughs> I want this, I want that, I want that. Yeah, I have a nefesh of Bahamas. This is so beautiful about this mimer. He doesn't say you're the Al Terebbe. You're not the Al Terebbe. Hosta Grace Nefesh Bahamas. And you have a lot of desires. But the Al Terebbe teaches you that all of these desires you should know below leave a life. They don't have. They don't capture your ultimate heart. That's what Beloy Leva Lev means. It's not, your whole heart is not there. Where is your heart? Where is your heart? Where is your real Ratzin? You should be aware that your real Ratzin is to fulfill the objective of Atzmus, to fulfill the purpose of Hashem's essence. To create this world, to create in this world a home for Hashem's essence, even in the lowest space of reality. Just like the Alte Rebbe said, I want only you. What does that mean for us? It means that even though I want many things, including my animal soul, I should be aware that ultimately what's my real Ratzon? My real Ratzon is to fulfill the kavana of Hashem. My real Ratzin is to be an ambassador of Hashem in this world, to be able to turn myself and into the world a place of ultimate oneness, of ultimate truth. To have complete relationship, complete oneness. And that begins with me, that I am an ambassador I am a representative, I am an embodiment. We always talk about this idea that I am an ambassador of infinity. I'm an ambassador of love and light and hope and wisdom and authenticity and healing and redemptiveness. What about all the Gashmias I want? I like food. I like a nice home. I want a comfortable bed. I want to go on vacation. I want a nice Pesach. I want good matzah. I want good marer. I want good charoises. I even want good karpas. Where's the Al Terebbe? The Al Terebbe didn't live this way. You should know that what you really want in Gashmias is you want it to be a vessel for Dveikus. You're looking for oneness. You want it to become a Kali for godliness. And this allows for there to be an excessive flow in Gashmis. Like said, the Al Terebbe said as follows: Hashem gives Jews matter, and Jews transform matter into energy. Hashem gives Jews materialism, and Jews take the material and they transform it into divine energy. This is the Al Terebbe. The Al Terebbe gives Jews Gashmias, and they turn matter into energy. So the Rebbe says, the Mizem movement, what do we understand from this? See, this is how the Rebbe spoke about giving Jews infinite Gashmias. When Hashem gives Jews a tremendous amount of Gashmias, what happens? There's an explosion of a tremendous amount of Ruchnias in the world. The Herst, the Herst via Rebbeet, some people say, nah, it's good, let people not have. The Rebbe says, give Jews all the Gashmis, and you know what you're going to get? You're going to get all the Ruchnis. Because from Gashmis, they make Ruchnis. <laughs> give them all the Gashmis, and you'll get, you know what you're going to get in return? You know how you put something in a machine on one side, and it comes out on the other side, transformed? You know these factories? The Alter Rebbe says, that's a Jew. You put a Jew, you give a Jew Gashmis, and you know what comes out? Ruchnis. So you give him more Gashmis, you'll get more Ruchnis. Ribui Bekamos, Ribui Bechos, in quantity and in quality. Because that's a Yid, that's a Jew. By a Jew, there's no separation, there's no dissonance. Anonos of Malka. Until the ultimate oneness, the ultimate perfection of Ruchnis. 
to the point that there is a complete oneness and connection with Hashem. Yisrael, the Jew, Torah, and Hashem are really all one. And all this can be experienced with joy and with gladness of heart. In other words, this whole maimah shouldn't lead somebody, if it's leading you to a place of despondency, you missed the point. The whole point is understanding who you are. As we are standing in the days preparing to the time of our liberation, and this allows us to actually experience the ultimate rev- rev- liberation, emancipation in actuality. And what's the ultimate real? The ultimate, true, and complete, wholesome redemption through Mashiach, speedily in our days literally speaking, mamish in a very concrete and tangible way. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.